Hey fuckers, welcome back to Son of Scotland TV. Just doing a wee quick review here on WWE Roadblock. I've seen a lot of reactions from a lot of people on this, calling this an awful show, calling it a terrible show. I don't necessarily agree with all that stuff, but the show was pretty boring. Uh, it was a boring, I, was, I planned on doing a review, then I watched it and I just I couldn't be bored doing it, but it's not the worst pay-per-view slash event I've seen. And it was probably a lot better than Fastlane, if I'm if I'm being honest. So we kick off the show with the New Day, and they're set to defend their titles against League of Nations. And I don't I don't know why this is happening. I think it's based on one one promo they had during the Edge and Christian segment a couple of weeks back. But anyway, New Day come out, and Big E's talking like a, a six year old child on his knees, and it was a wee bit funny, but. It's still lame at the same at the end of the day. New day have been going on for uh, too long, and we do need a new day. We need a we need a new team. We need to, we need fucking change. That's what we need. The new day they need to lose the belts. The champion should be the Wyatts, but that's uh, that's another story. But anyway, League of Nations come out, and you get Sheamus and Way Barrett. They are coming out from their entrance, and they do this really generic like. <laughs> taunt it's like it's like i don't know like celebration or like showing off thing where the like they both stand together and, and they raise their hands up like three times each and it's just so fucking lame like they couldn't have done ah it's like a taunt it's like the generic taunt you would get in the wwe games and then they're doing that and it's like it makes no sense the new day have just like cut a promo on them embarrassing them they should be coming out pissed off not with a smile on their face and raising their hands and they're like fucking dafties you know that made zero sense the match not worth talking about really it was a poor match kofi kingston botched nearly broke his neck he didn't new day one let's move on up next with a promo from jericho it was a decent promo and they should have left it at that but then they had jack swagger come out and challenge jericho to a match and this match was sloppy it was decent but when there's just sloppy and minor botches and stuff like that it just take it does take away from the actual match itself so this it was a decent match but that's all it was but people are going to remember just this match not looking just the mistakes in this match that's what you're going to remember you're not going to remember a great match between jericho and swagger not a chance then we had a nxt tag team championship between match between uh Enzo Amore and Big Call and Cassidy, big seven footer. Not quite sure he's seven foot, but he is pretty tall. I know WWE always lie about their heights, but this this is a big fucker. And they were taking on two boring guys, and this was probably a match of the night. Lots of good stuff. Uh, the tag champs, I think, it was it the Revival? I think their name's called. Do have a very very cool finisher. I do like it. They uh, nailed it on Big Call and Cassidy on the outside, and then they I think they nailed it on Amore to win, but. They've got a good finisher, but I think the I think Amore and Colin Cassidy should have won. Um, they've got good chemistry together. Amore's good on the mic. The the crowd are behind them, considering they don't really know who they are. You, they definitely they've got something. They've got an it fact on that not a lot of teams have. The Usos are, are, have nothing lost Matadors. I mean, there's only a couple of decent teams on the on the main roster at the moment, so. I think these guys should be called up. Maybe that's why they didn't win the belts. Maybe WWE plan on using them on the main roster in the future. Hopefully they do. But yeah, this was probably a match tonight. And then we had Natalia taking on Charlotte. People saying this was the, like, a, a great match. Match Charlotte's boring as fuck and Natalia's a better wrestler, a better talker. And even Natalia's not even that great. So it is what it is. I'm sick of Charlotte. Hopefully she loses the belt. I can't stand it. She looks like a man. Just very manly, manly face, manly body, the way she moves, just, I know it's not about looks and shit like that, but, fuck it, why is this a uh, slimmer version of China holding the, the women's title, fucking probably transgender flair, fuck, I don't, I don't know, Ric Flair, he's old and it's embarrassing, he's still, he's still the best, like, one of the best, you can see when he's, like, walking, oh, and what I want to mention is the horrible selling in this match, yeah, They've got like sharpshooters on, they've got figure fours on, and these are very painful manoeuvres, and they're not even selling it, it doesn't even look as if it hurts, and I think uh, Charlotte had the f f figure four on Natalia, and she's just going, no, no, I'm not going to tip, no, and it's ridiculous, man, back in the day, you remember Ric Flair, like, when he was in his feud with Triple H, he'd lock in the figure four, and Triple H would, you know, the pain would just be, just be, like, 
marked on his face and he'd be like you know banging on the mat desperately trying to break the to get to the ropes or trying to turn Ric Flair or break the hold or you know do something fighting for his life he honestly like submit back in the day especially with GR calling it submissions like they were good and in the 10 lock he thought it, it looked as if it hurt and he thought the match could end at any moment but not now fucking Michael Cole he can't call shit you look a submission on it's bored as fuck and the people don't even look in pain and they always get to the ropes and break it it's, it's shit, it really is ridiculous, that pissed me off in this match, fucking hell, if these women can't, if they can't execute a good fucking submission, then just don't do it, you know what I mean, it's sad to see these, these submission moves that, like, you know, won world titles for people like Bret Hart, Ric Flair, Sting, um, and now they've just been reduced to shitty, fake look manoeuvres by these untalented cunts, that's, my mini rant on that over. But anyway, the only thing good about Charlotte is her dad's Ric Flair. That's the only fucking thing good. Hopefully she loses the belt. To, uh, I'd, I'd like to see Becky Lynch win the belt at Mania. But anyway, moving on. We might have been Brock Lesnar and <laughs> Luke Harper. False advertisement. The cunts to try and get you to believe that it's going to be Brock versus uh, Wyatt. And then it turns out not to be the case. But I like Harper. I think he's... I wouldn't say he's... I'm not going to say he's more talented than uh, Bray Wyatt, but he's definitely more talented than Eric Ronan and that Braun Strowman guy. He doesn't even deserve a job in the WWE. So yeah, Luke Harper's very good. And I think him and Ronan should win the tag titles. I can't believe they've been in WWE, what, like, four years now? And they haven't won the belts? Or maybe three years maybe and they haven't won the belts? It's stupid. Anyway, they changed this to a tag handicap match. And it wasn't. It was Harper one-on-one -on -one with Brock. And a lot of people are saying this was shit. It was just suplexes in an F5. And... This is the worst match Brock Lesnar's had since his return. I disagree with that. I think Harper got more offense in than recently a lot of Brock Lesnar, a lot of Brock Lesnar opponents have. You remember Brock Lesnar at the Rumble, like threw all these guys over the top rope with ease. I mean, Luke Harper for moments of this match was beaten down on Lesnar, and that was cool. That was, I like that. I would have liked to have seen more of it, but when Brock got in control, he nailed a bunch of Germans. He done the F5. And that was it. He got the pin. Then he chased Bray Wyatt backstage. This match, it was it was not a right match. I was gonna, I can't, don't think you can give it a rating really, but I'd give it a five out of ten perhaps. But I'm not saying it was bad. It's just it was short and it wasn't a proper match. Like I said, it was another Brock Lesnar beat down. But to say this was his worst match, I don't disagree with that because like Brock, uh, Luke Harper got a lot more offense in than I think anyone would have anticipated. So. That's that, uh, and I think, oh yeah, then we had a Stardust and Sami Zayn match, Sami Zayn, no idea why people are masturbating over this guy, he's not that great, he's, he's a fucking vanilla bum midget that can't really talk and he's not that good in the ring, he's certainly got nothing on Kevin Owens who he's set to face for the belt at Mania. Um, there's just nothing about this Sami Zayn, you know, you, you get some smaller guys that have got out the look to them or they've got like a... You know, or I don't know, they've got, they've got something about them, but this Sami Zayn guy's got nothing, there's no it factor there. And it's like, I don't like Neville, but I can sort of see why people would look at Neville and they'd see something cool. Rey Mysterio had the mask, he sees something cool. Uh, AJ Styles, he's got, he's got that it factor about him. There are smaller guys that have got this, um, I mean, they do have this thing, but Sami Zayn, nah, just bland, boring. Hopefully this cunt doesn't beat... Kevin Owens for the belt, and then on to the main event, Triple H versus Ambrose, again decent match, but Triple H really does look old these days, he's, he used to be jacked, he used to be like the Terminator back in the day, so it's now, but not anymore, he's very flabby, and you can see he's old in the ring, he's slowed down a hell of a lot, and he's slowed down in this match, and this match, from what I see, was basically Dean Ambrose kicking Triple H's ass, um, lots of, a couple of close near finishes, and then Dean Ambrose nails the DDT finisher, he gets the pin, Triple H is like, I don't know, he's, he's like putting his, stretching his body into a, a weird position, you know, like, he's like pushing up, and it, look, it did look weird, and then Dean Ambrose gets a free count, and you're like, what the fuck, and then, but the referee says that, strange, the referee actually counts free, but then he says it's not a legit pin, because Ambrose's feet were under the bottom ropes, I didn't necessarily see it like that. His feet didn't look under the bottom ropes to me, and if you knew they were under the bottom ropes, 
why would you count the three in the first place? So I thought that was strange. And then Dean Ambrose continues to kick Triple ass. Throws him on the outside. But then he misses an elbow drop through the table, which cracks uh, Dean Ambrose. Then it's down, Travis gets in the ring. Ambrose struggles to get in the ring. But then at number nine, count number, referee goes nine, and he does like a super Cena dive into the ring. But unfortunately for him, he dives straight into Triple H's uh, crotch, and he gets nailed way a pedigree and it was considering it was the first pedigree of the match maybe you'd have thought Ambrose would have kicked it but no he didn't and to be honest I'm sick of seeing people kicking out the finishers I liked it back in the day when someone hit their finisher and you knew the match was over that's why they call it finishers they're supposed to finish the fucking match you know what I mean you're not supposed to have people kick out of 10 finishers at the time Rock first seen it I know they've seen us shit and the Rock was gassed after two minutes so they can't do much else but it was just like a finisher kick out fest and it wasn't good. But the same, I thought Ambrose might have kicked out of this, but he didn't. So, no big deal. Triple H wins. And it was a decent match, but it was boring. You knew Triple H was going to win. To be honest, all the matches tonight were decent matches. There was no bad matches, but they were boring. Well, the Sami Zayn Stardust wasn't really necessary, but they were boring. There was no excitement in them. And for that reason, I'm going to have to give this pay per view. Probably gonna have to give it. So it wasn't really a paper few to be honest, and considering I only had half the roster, it was alright. I'll give this like a 5.5 at the end, but it wasn't horrible. Like everyone's saying this is, it was awful, it wasn't, it was just boring. And you could argue if it's boring, it's shit, but it was better than Fast Lane. The matches were decent. Fast Lane was fucking dog shit, and at least there was no Roman Reigns on this paper view. So that's another good thing about it. That's holy shit, I guess we're approaching 12 minutes. I was only supposed to do a wee two minute review, but talk about wrestling pisses me off. I get pissed off and I ramble on, so yeah, gonna go watch The Walking Dead. I might review that. Although The Walking Dead's shit too, just like WWE, so maybe not. Can't be arsed reviewing this shit. But anyway, guys, been some Scotland TV. Until next time, peace.